Hello everyone, today we will be understanding PI3K AKT mTOR pathway. In this one, we will be understanding what this pathway is, what is PI3K activation, what is AKT recruitment and activation. In this one, we will also understand mTOR activation as well as the regulatory feedback mechanisms. Before we dive into the main content, a huge shout out to our sponsors, Consensus, for supporting the channel so that we can bring amazing content to you. If you want to access the premium pack of Consensus, you can use the discount code available in the description box. And for those who are not familiar with Consensus, here is a quick snapshot of what Consensus is. Meet Consensus, the intelligent way to search for scientific research. Type in a question and let Consensus instantly sort and summarize trusted research findings all in one place. No more endless scrolling with consensus, you find what you need fast, clear, and verified. Compare studies effortlessly, consensus allows you to analyze research from various sources side by side, helping you to make informed decisions quickly. Personalize your research experience, create profiles that save your preferences, making it easier to access your most relevant topics. Collaborate seamlessly. Share your findings with colleagues and collaborate in real time, ensuring everyone is on the same page. Get consensus today and simplify your research journey. So today we will be understanding PI3K, AKT, mTOR signaling pathways. As the name indicates, there are various signaling molecules that are involved in this signaling pathway. This is one of the most studied or extensively studied cellular signaling pathway due to its role in various cellular processes, including cell growth, survival, which is cell survival, metabolism, and proliferation. These are all very, very important processes uh, in, in survival of the cell. Dysregulation of this particular pathway can lead to various diseases like cancers, metabolic disorders, and in addition to that, there are other diseases that are involved. That is why I'm making it a significant target for therapeutic interventions. So by targeting this particular pathway, if there is any disbalance in that pathway, we can design or develop cures against various metabolic disorders. This pathway includes various steps, so we'll understand all these steps one by one. The first step in this signaling pathway is the PI3K activation. PI3K is a heterodimer, it's a heterodimer molecule consisting of regulatory subunit and a catalytic subunit which is P110 or P110. Heterodimer means it contains two different domains. One is regulatory, that means it's going to control the functioning. And the second one is the catalytic domain, which is going to perform the specific task or the function by binding to its target. Upon ligand binding to the RTKs, so the RTKs are the proteins that are going to be going to be activated by ligand molecules, and those ligands they are going to bind to the RTKs and they are present on the surface of the cell. These receptors, they will undergo, after binding, they will undergo autophosphorylation, specifically on the tyrosine residues of these protein molecules. So when tyrosine residues, they are going to get phosphorylated, uh, phosphorylated which is also autophosphorylation, it's going to undergo specific conformational changes. And because of that, it will create docking sites for a subunit of PI3K, the subunit that we have previously discussed. Various GPCRs, GPCRs are uh, G protein coupled receptors. On the other hand, they can activate PI3K via G beta gamma subunits. And once this recruitment is, is done, they are, they are going to move to the membrane and then PI3K, specifically the catalytic domain, which is P110 is going to get activated. And then activated PI3K phosphorylates the membrane lipid, specifically it's also known as PIP2. The full form of PIP2 is phosphotidyl inositol 45 biphosphate. This is also known as PIP2 and converting it into PIP3. And PIP3 is phosphotidyl inositol 345 triphosphate. So this conversion, this generation step which is involving PIP uh, kinases, which is, which is involving PI3 kinases, and uh, generating PIP3 is one of the crucial or one of the important step that serves as a second messenger to propagate the signaling cascade further down the line. 
because of this activation, multiple steps are going to get activated. And this is one of the key steps. The formation of PIP3 is one of the key steps that is going to cause or act as a second messenger to propagate the downstream signaling pathway. So this is all about the step one, which is PI3K activation and the generation of PIP3. Now, the next step will be AKT recruitment and activation. Previously, we understood that how PIP3 will be generated. And now we'll understand how PIP3 is linked with AKT. The accumulation of PIP3 at the membrane creates a docking site for particular protein, which is plexstrain homology domain containing proteins, which includes AKT, which is also known as protein kinase B, and phosphoinositide dependent kinase 1, which is also known as PDK1. These are the two proteins that falls under the family of plexstrain homology domain containing proteins. Upon binding to PIP3, so AKT, AKT is binding to PIP3, AKT will translocate to the plasma membrane where it will undergo activation. And that activation will be through phosphorylation. PDK1 phosphorylates AKT at its specific posi position which is threonine 308 residue. While the mammalian target of rapamycin complex 2, which is mTOR C2, phosphorylates AKT at serine residue, and the number is 473. These two phosphorylation events fully are going to activate AKT, and this will enable further phosphorylation of various downstream signaling molecules. So, you can understand how uh, the first step, which is PIP generation, will lead to the activation of AKT. And then further, the proteins that is uh, proteins that are PK, PDK1 and mTOR C2 will activate uh, the AKT by by specifically phosphorylating serine 473, and which is which is being done by mTOR and threonine 308 residue, which is being done by PDK1. And this will activate AKT completely. And now AKT is fully ready to go to the next step. Now let's understand what is that next step. Now let's understand the next step, which is mTOR activation. One of the critical target, one of the critical targets of activated AKT that we have seen in the previous previous section is the tuberous sclerosis complex, which is also known as TSC. This is composed of TSC1, that is one unit, which is also known as hemartin, and the TSC2, which is also known as tuberin. TSC1 and TSC2, they both act as a negative regulator of mTOR C1 by inhibiting the small GTPase known as RHEB, RAS homologue enriched in the brain. AKT phosphorylates and inhibits TSC2 specifically and thereby it is going to relieve the suppression on RAB. This allows RAB to activate mTOR C1. So now mTOR C1 is activated. Activated mTOR C1 will integrate signals from nutrients, energy status, as well as growth factors. And this will further regulate the anabolic processes such, such as protein and lipid synthesis. And how it does, it phosphorylates the downstream effector molecules like S6K1, which is also known as ribosomal protein, S6 kinase, and 4 EBP1, which is known as eukaryotic initiation factor for E binding protein. This will further enhance the protein translation and will cause cell growth. So you can understand how all these signaling pathways, they are activated and now the further after the AKT activation, mTOR activation is one of the important pathway that will lead to the cell growth via protein production, protein translation, as well as lipid synthesis. Now let's understand the regulation and the feedback mechanisms of this particular pathway. The pathway is tightly regulated by various feedback mechanisms and regulation is really important. It cannot be just doing the cell growth all the time. There, there should be some factors that can suppress the pathway so that a balance is maintained. So for example, hyperactivation of mTOR C1 can suppress upstream signaling through S6K1 mediated phosphorylation of IRS1, which is insulin receptor substrate 1. 
So what is what is happening here? There is hyperactivation of mTOR C1, and that can that can suppress the IRS1 via S6K1 mediated phosphorylation, and this can reduce PI3K activity. Another factor is P10, which is phosphatase and tensin homologue. It is another crucial regulator that can dephosphorylate PIP3. So in this case, a major change shift is happening which is causing dephosphorylation of PIP3 and it is becoming again uh, which is PIP2. Now this will basically break this entire pathway. That is why it will act as a break on the pathway to prevent excessive signaling. Whenever cell is under, undergoing any signaling pathway, any factor is getting produced, there should be a check, there should be a regulatory framework inside the cell that can slow down that pathway. You don't want all those signaling molecules to get expressed all the time. There must be, there should be a signaling pathway in place that can, or a factor in place that can stop that signaling. PIP3K, AKT, mTOR pathway is a central regulator of cellular processes and a counterstone in the study of cancer and other diseases. There are various diseases, number of diseases, including cancer, is dependent on this particular pathway. So understanding the network and the interaction of different, different signaling molecules within the pathway is really important. It's a foundation for developing targeted therapies and also it can advance the discovery of precision medicines. So in conclusion, if you understand this pathway, you can do research in various areas, especially in the area of diseases such as cancer and identifying new and new molecules that are regulating this particular pathway may help you discover new therapies, new therapeutic molecules or target and then directly or indirectly you can control these important diseases or you can develop new therapeutics or diagnostic measures that can be used against these dangerous diseases. So that was all for this particular pathway. I'll meet you in the next one where we are going to study more pathways, mechanism of those pathways and we'll, we'll dive deep into the molecular mechanism and also the application and I'll try, try my best to make you understand how the signaling works. Till then, take care everyone.